Welcome to the 51st Annual Father's Day Car Show in Oak Brook, Illinois, sponsored by the Classic Car Club of America. Hope you enjoy all these beautiful cars here. Thank you for watching U.S. Classic Muscle Cars. Please enjoy this next video. Like us, share, subscribe to us on Facebook and social media. Well, this was driven in from Crown Point, Indiana. Yes. And uh, this. Fog this morning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, through the fog. Now this is a Type 57 S Bugatti. Correct. Yep. SC. SC. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is SC the SC. for base, which means lowered, and C means compressor. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, this is approximately what year? 1936. 1936. Good. And it's dual overhead cam, straight eight. Straight eight. Yeah. Is that four valves per cylinder? No, two, two valves per two cylinder. Two valves per cylinder. The um, design was copied off of Miller for the head. Okay. And so the cups around the spark plugs were interchanged with the Miller. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so. Harry Miller. Harry oh, Miller, oh, yeah. Oh, he oh, traded oh, oh, several Wisconsin. race cars for several Bugattis, and then Bugatti copied his hit cylinder head. And everybody copied a little bit of everybody, but, as yes, we know. Why reinvent the wheel? Yeah. Right. So, so what's the wheelbase of this? I have no idea. <laughs> How about the weight? Wait, this car weighs about 3,600 pounds. 3,600 pounds? Well, it's got a steel body. Oh, okay. So that's why you've got the yeah. extra weight on yeah. it. Which I'm happy with the steel body. Yeah. And, th and this engine would put out about maybe... The engine is a 3.3 liter straight eight, puts out 220 horsepower. That was about what I was going to guess. Yeah. And uh, first year we had in the Colorado Grand, we did... A Went out to Walden, Colorado at 9,500 feet and ran about 110 miles an hour for about half an hour. And the um, doing about 4,400 RPM. Engine is good for 5,000 RPM. I got home and pulled the dyno sheets on the engine from Phil Riley's and they dynoed the engine at 6,000 RPM. Now these cars were all mechanical brake, if I recall. The car originally had mechanical brakes with cables and chains. And it's scary, so Eric Coop had new brakes in France, hydraulics. So I put, we put hydraulic brakes on so we can drive and be safe with the car. But in the original day, they were mechanical. The original, yeah, the original ones, early cars had mechanical. Later cars did have the Lockheed hydraulic brakes Even on before them. the war? Oh, yeah. I'll be darned. Yeah, I, I didn't later know cars that. Had them. So know it's that. original yeah. for this series car. Yeah. Well, when you worked at Bugatti, it was pretty unusual because they made all their own tools. And one of the most treasured items is a Bugatti Vice. Yeah. That has probably got the Bugatti B on it. Yeah. Uh, Hillary's seen one and so have I. Yeah, neither one of us have one. No, they're just too heavy to carry back <laughs> and, on the airplane. United Airlines would not like me. No. Oh, well. So, uh, so where was this car found? I originally saw the car in about 1994 in Scottsdale at the Barrett Jackson auction. They had it there. And the car was... A low rider, the fender skirts were probably that high off the ground. I thought, how'd you get in, out of a gas station? Well, couldn't afford to buy the car at the time. Uh, the tent poles were bidding, the chandeliers were bidding a million dollars, no sale. Um, it kicked around for a while. They had a pre auction in Monterey one year. This car and about three others were up there from Barrett Jackson. And just before the auction dropped a valve, the bank said, sell it. Uh, Blackhawk bought it, and I bought it the next day from Blackhawk. And then we had Phil Riley go through the engine, what we found wrong in the engine. Um, I sent him the whole car, and they did the whole chassis. Uh, you know, the guy that built the engine up said, yeah, it always ticked a little bit. Well, yes, that's because the valves were hitting the pistons. Oh. <laughs> and so the guy that put it together had never built a Bugatti engine before. So it had a nice wind to the supercharger and stuff on it. Well, the gear wind was because nothing was set right. So now it's fairly quiet. Just a normal gear wind. Too. Now this has got roller bearing mains and rods. No, no, it's got no? normal shell bearings. Oh, it did? When yeah. did they? When did they go to that? Oh, those were done in the Grand Prix cars, basically. Oh, the early Type 35s and stuff. Because I know they had to re-roller those engines pretty frequently. Right. No, this Type 57 Bugatti was sort of a real car. You could drive it 10 hours and work on it an hour. Ah. Uh, early cars, you drove them an hour and worked on them for 10 hours. You know what? You know, that's probably the best part of the interview. Is the is the one to ten and the ten to one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how's the car to drive? It's it's fun to drive, fantastic. It's like on rails. It goes around the corner, dead flat. Um, it, a little bit like a buckboard on rough roads, but 
it's just fun to drive. Yeah. So. And, and do you let your wife drive? I'm not married, so that's. That, yeah, that's. So that's yeah, I've, I've I'm never been married either. So, so that's a moot question. But yeah, I, other friends drive it. I mean, yeah. I've had other friends yeah. drive it, so it's not a, yeah. not difficult to drive. Oh, it's 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 rare. I Hill would have the numbers better than me. Well, originally they built a prototype, which has been recreated by the guild in Canada in a light turquoise color. They built three original cars. Two exist. Ralph Lauren has one. The other car is in California with Mullen and Rob. Uh, and the third car was hit by a Bugatti train before the war. It sat in a junkyard for about 10 years while the insurance companies argued over it. The guy and his mistress were killed in it. After the end of the war, all that's left was a broken engine and some other parts. The steel and all frat chassis and stuff had gone to the war effort. And a guy bought it, uh, recreated the car. Wheelbase, well, from here to here, it wasn't the correct wheelbase when he rebuilt it. It kicked around. It was rebuilt by Lecoq, which is the top restorer in Paris. Still all wrong. Another guy bought it, sent it to Paul Russell, who restored Ralph Lauren's car. And so they took the car apart. They had an empty hole in the floor. From there, they started back up. Right wheelbase, right everything, and recreated the car. It's got a different back end on it. The rear fenders come straight back. And the rivets line comes straight back. Now, the, the rivets are because magnesium couldn't be welded. Supposedly the original car was magnesium. Nobody knows for sure. Yeah. Uh, but magnesium can't be welded. Yeah. So they did the done the rivets. And when the guild reproduced the car, they would form a fender, a section of the car, leave it overnight, come back in the morning. There was a flat piece on the table. And they found out that you had to heat the magnesium just below the burning point before it would take a set and stand up. Oh boy, that. and that's a high burning point on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, so, so that's that, and that very fire, tricky. A little more and it burns, a little less it holds its shape. And that cannot be put out with water. No, so they did a fantastic job restoring or making the car. Okay. Hey, a little bit about the a little history. Bugatti made their last car in about 1951. Uh, then became Bugatti Messer and they made a lot of aircraft landing gears and it was an engineering company. Probably in the late 80s, early 90s, Artoli from Italy bought the name from Bugatti Messer. And he recreated the Bugatti EB110 in Italy on the northwest side of Modena. Uh, he was in business probably three or four years. Fantastic car, but went bankrupt. Uh, owed about 250 million euros. But he owned the name in a holding company in Switzerland. So the people that bought the parts out of the factory, oh boy, we can make 10 cars. And they said, sorry, but you can't use the Bugatti name. I own the Bugatti name. So they had to call them Dower EB110s. Mm. Uh, and then Artoli sold the name to Volkswagen. And Volkswagen created the current Veyron and Chiron cars today. By De Dobler in Belgium in the early 60s, he was a Belgian importer for Bugatti. And he re reproduced a number of the cars. This car, he did the Bugatti with the front fenders that turned with the wheels and several other cars that had disappeared. So the coach work on this is done in steel, which I'm very happy with, because you get the aluminum. Aluminum has an ash frame underneath it, which rots over time and the glue all comes loose. So this I don't have that problem with. And they had done an Aston Martin and some other cars, and they had done the Bugatti um, Aerole, or no, the, the Boisan Aerosport. And fantastic workmanship. And, and you know, ask me if you have a sewing machine. No, we do it all by hand. No and kidding. Each stitch is run through like a steamer trunk and tied underneath. So if you lose one stitch, they won't unravel. Well, I tell you, it certainly looks impressive looking underneath the hood on it. All that, all that aluminum. Yeah, it's a monoblock in here. So the crankcase is aluminum, the sump's aluminum, the head's aluminum. But the monoblock, if you want to do a valve job, you got to take the engine apart because you've got to go up the chamber and then. Grind the valves. It's not a removable cylinder head. Not a removable cylinder head. Okay. Uh, a lot of cars back there then were that way. I think we need to go back to it now. <laughs> well, they they didn't have the gasket technology to make it reliable at higher pressures and a higher speed. So yeah. Yeah. Bentley used that same technology. A lot of the car companies back then used that technology. Yeah. Can you speak to a moment about this uh, decorative um, well, the, the, closure? Well, well, this is just. Typical, typical of the period. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, with the, you know, the uh, the engine 
supposedly, according to people I've talked to, the engine that got is flat because that's all the people in that area of France could do is flat panels and they can yeah. Similar to Duesenberg. Yeah, so that was their technology back then. The body work again, the hinges like this, there's spring loaders, you can pull them up and latch the hood here. Um, it was just technology of that time period that was normal. Supercharger runs off the gears in the back there, runs forward to the supercharger. The other side it runs forward to the water pump and the generator. That sure is neat. Yeah, and in some ways you hate to close the hood. Yeah. It looks too good. Would you ask him about awards that he's received? Oh, I really haven't. I don't show. Nope. Wait, I yeah, just right, drive right. I mean, it's not yeah. a, yeah. I don't care about it. Yeah, Hillary, you do the same thing that I would do with it if I had it. Yeah, I mean, we've done probably 10 color on the grants with it. Sure, so sure. there's no awards for that. You just you're a finisher. So right. how so how many miles do you think you've driven? I probably put over ten thousand miles on it. That's not bad. That's not yeah. bad. I'd, I'd be proud of myself doing that too. Yeah. So it's just fun to drive. But yeah. that's... now, how did you? Um, I'm and I'm just asking myself. How did you get into finding this car? As far as uh, did you did you aggressively look for it? Did you? No, I seen the car before, and not in my price range. Uh -huh. And then when it was sold in Mon Monterey, uh, it got down to where it could be in my price range because the motor had been damaged in it. And I was able to afford to buy it and then restore it.
Okay, Hillary. Well, thanks. Thanks an awful lot for the interview. Pleasure. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Happy motoring. All right.